Yeah, there's also an exploding graveyard. Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Jason Waite, and this is Jason's Weird Reads, and this is the place where I like to talk about books, mostly horror books, fantasy, science fiction, mostly horror though. That sounds like your bag. Please hit the subscribe button down there below. Now, uh, today I'm going to bring you two reviews, and they're both cosmic horror reviews. So I'm going to be reviewing The Nothing That Is by Kyle Winkler and Shelter for the Damned by Mike Thorne. I have interviewed both authors recently, so if you want to check that out, uh, they'll either be linked up here or down there. And it was a lot of fun talking to both of them. Now, I'm going to start with The Nothing That Is by Kyle Winkler, because that was the first one that I read. And it was kind of an interesting story how I got in contact with him, because I was listening to... Uh, I was listening to him talk to Nikki from Dark Between Pages, and he was talking about how, you know, his book is Cosmic Horror, and I love Cosmic Horror, but I hadn't read Cosmic Horror in a few months at that point, and so I was really craving it, and I was like, I contacted Kyle through through uh, Twitter, and I was like, uh, you want you want to come on my show and, and talk about your book? I'll, I'll read your book. <laughs> And you know he was he was cool and he was he came on the show. I read the book. He came on the show. Really enjoyed the book. So how's about I get into the synopsis here? The Nothing That Is by Kyle Winkler. Synopsis: It's 1986. Kate McCall is an assistant manager for a catering business. Driving to work one morning, part of the local graveyard explodes. Later the same day, Cade gets an odd message from a client who needs catering for an extreme food business. He calls himself Mr. Dinosaur, and he's paying $11,000. Despite Cade's reservations, he takes the gig. Although, who's feeding whom is another question entirely. Involving female biker gangs, cults, possessed furniture, and a full dose of cosmic horror, the nothing that is serves up the weird. So, the story. Does it live up to the cosmic horror uh, trope or subgenre? My answer is yes, it does. It's, uh, it is very weird, um, especially at the end, but I don't really want to get into the end. But the, the co I think the cosmic horror aspect really comes at the end, but there's... There's certain elements throughout the story that that just strike you as weird. Like in uh, the interview I did with Kyle, we talk about the dinner scene uh, where um, Cade is is serving. Um, <clears throat> he's serving the new client, Mr. Dinosaur, and it's just a very it's a very odd. I, I compared it to David Lynch um, because it just has a strong David Lynch oddness to it. And, um, you know, there's little bits of that throughout. And then at the end, you get to the, the actual cosmic horror and uh, things get really weird. Um, and also there's uh, there is an ex existential or at least a, a threat to existence. Um and uh, I don't want to get into that too much because, you know, there is potential of spoiling this book. Yeah, there's also an exploding graveyard. And that happens in, the, like, the very first, very first, uh, I believe the very first sentence it's mentioned. <laughs> so, um, you know, he starts off with a bang, quite literally, and that's, you know, that's what authors are supposed to do. So cheers, Kyle. So he starts off the book with something exciting, and he's able to ex uh, extend it. It never the book never truly gets boring. Um, the story kind of keeps going. It's very fast paced, um, and it's also uh, it's very short. I think most cosmic horror, most uh, weird fiction, is generally in the uh, novella range, short story to novella range. And I think, honestly, I've said this many times, but I'm going to stick by it. It This is where uh, this genre, it thrives in this shorter form. And it can go into longer forms, uh, you know, House of Leaves, anyone? But uh, let's face it, it, it's better, I think, when it's shorter. 
Um, the characters I thought were all solid. I really liked uh, how um, every single character in this book has a flaw. Um, they all have like a quirk, you know, they, they all breathe life. They, they feel like people you've known. And um, the main character, you don't know if you can trust him. Uh, <laughs> he's, uh, I wouldn't say he's slimy, he's kind of fed up with his boss because his boss is a real asshole. And, but he does kind of a slimy thing in stealing uh, the client, Mr. Dinosaur, from his boss. In a food catering business, he, he wants to start his own business. And so, I guess maybe, you know, it's just like business is business. But uh, the main character isn't exactly likable, but you can kind of see where he's coming from. Uh, and that's definitely, you know, like gray, morally gray characters. I, uh, I absolutely love them because we all do things like this, whether, like, I, I'm not saying everyone would do what, what uh, Cade did in this story, but uh, we do things, probably something else that, that you could say is equal to or like it. Um, nobody is perfect and nobody's always kind. And, and so you, I don't think you can really read this book and judge Cade unfairly and, and Kyle Winkler he handles this character so you don't necessarily hate him and, and can't read more about, you know, what he's going through. Because I think he makes Cade an interesting character, especially you just wonder what he's going to do next or what's going to happen to him next. So, um, him not obviously being the only character <laughs> in the book, you also have Mr. Dinosaur who um, you just don't know. You just don't know <laughs> uh, what he is or or maybe where he's from so um, so yeah the characters are all great um, and I really enjoyed the uh, the, the whole bad boss uh, subplot it's kind of a theme in a sense uh, because we've all been there we've all had bad bosses and in fact I, I've, I've, I've said a few times it's hard not to be a bad boss when you're in a management position because uh, you have to make all the bad decisions, all the nitty-gritty decisions that nobody wants. But this boss, you know, he, he's a couple of steps beyond that. Um, but I do find it rare to be a, a boss. The, the, I, I, I've been under uh, a couple of people who've been my boss. I've had a couple bosses, what I'm trying to say, who, who everyone seemed to like. Nobody talked behind their back. And like I said, they're very rare. <laughs> I think I've only had like one. And it was a long time ago. Most bosses are put in a position to be uh, to be hated. Honestly, there's a divide between employee and manager. And I, I, you know what? I've been there myself. I've, I was a manager for about a year at a at a job, um, and it wasn't cool, man. People like turned on you. It, it's just like just having the moniker on you, manager or not manager. I, I was like a team leader people just it's 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 unless you've been in it you, you don't know you know what I mean it's it's not cool and I would never do it again <laughs> unless it was my own business um so you know what the whole story itself is is really awesome and it was a lot of fun I think you know you don't go into this book looking for the dread the one thing that uh this book was missing that it absolutely doesn't does not need and you you look to writers like uh, Laird Barron, who kind of leaves out this element within cosmic horror and weird fiction, is that the main character isn't suffering from some terrible loss and is trying to heal from it when the weird thing comes. Um, I find that's a, a typical trope in weird fiction, but uh, it's not in this book, and that's fine. I think, you know what, not everyone's experiencing loss, and so, you know what, I'm guilty of that. Um, but it's loss is one of those things that just hits everyone but uh, I'm glad that this book didn't have that sense of loss and uh, you know what the next book too doesn't really have that um, so final outcome very well done cosmic horror and as I said I recommend it I honestly cannot remember any negatives uh, that I held on this book um, it, it it's it's not a perfect book, no book is, but I had a lot of fun reading it, and it, you know it's been a, quite a few months now since I've read it, but 
if there was anything glaring, I would have remembered it and I would be telling you about it right now. So go check out The Nothing That Is by Kyle Winkler. It's, uh, it's a fun romp. I don't think it'll give you any deep thoughts, but, uh, but it's still a lot of fun. All right, moving on to Shelter for the Damned by Mike Thorne. And man, did I ever fall in love with this story, which is weird because I did have an actual issue with this book, but I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. The synopsis. While looking for a secret place to smoke cigarettes with his two best friends, troubled teenager Mark discovers a mysterious shack in a suburban field. Alienated from his parents and peers, Mark finds within the shack an escape greater than anything he has ever experienced. But it isn't long before the place begins revealing a strange powerful sentience and it wants something in exchange for the shelter it provides. Shelter for the Damned is not only a scary, fast-paced horror novel, but also an unflinching study of suburban violence, masculine conditioning, and adolescent rage. I really, really dug this story. Again, um, the characters are all believable. Um, you know, it, it was almost like uh, seeing a lot of the kids I grew up with that these kids encounter and who they are as people themselves. Um, their parents are also similar. I, you know, growing up, I didn't grow up in, in, a, in like a suburbia type place. I grew up in a small town and it was pretty different. We have, we certainly have our, like, subdivisions we, we we have like new subdivisions around here that didn't exist when i was a kid but uh of course they exist here uh this is where the story takes place so it's it's definitely suburbia and i think that's an interesting uh, concept because you know you could consider like those subdivisions being like uh packing people into a tin can and what you get are a bunch of communities and this this book is very sort of community centric and so when you just living the way i grew up without that sort of closeness it was more spread out like we had to ride our bikes for about you know 10 20 minutes to get to your friend's house it wasn't just down the street um but but here you know it is just like a few houses down is where john lives you know and so, but you still get the picture. Uh, growing up, you get to know your your friends' parents, and and there's sort of quirks either through what your friends tell you, or while you're staying there overnight and watching movies. And uh, so, you know, I think we've all had kind of strange experiences, maybe, with uh, parents <laughs> while while uh, staying over. But what Mike Thorne does is he takes that idea and he really exaggerates it. Um, there's a lot of weird things that happen in this in this uh, in this novella that uh, are real life things, but that you know, look looking back upon it now seems a little exaggerated, but they're not exaggerated. You know, these types of things are happening. Um, I identified with our anti anti-hero protagonist as I I have always been a bit of an outcast and. Uh, making friends for me is really hard to me in my perception it seems like people get to know who i am and they figure out i'm weird and then they just go away <laughs> um and that's pretty much who our protagonist is except our protagonist has a much darker uh unconscious than i do um he's uh a lot of reviewers when i was investigating this book and checking out reviews a lot of people were saying how he was a uh, sociopath and i don't know if that's necessarily the case honestly because he does have uh he does care about things um it's just everything that he cares about ends up turning upside down on him and crapping all over him and he becomes obsessed with things and being obsessed with those things he has trouble seeing what other people might need from him as a friend or as a son and uh, it pretty much seems to him like the whole world is against him even his friends um so so it's hard to say whether or not he is an actual soci sociopath but uh 
I'm not going to argue that he's not a sociopath. I, I just think it's not just as black as, and white as that. The storyline is where he uh, he finds this shack with his friends, and he becomes obsessed with this shack because, as the synopsis said, uh, it offers something to him, and there's some weirdness going on with this shack. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't, again, you know, I, I don't like going too deep into the stories when I'm doing reviews because I, uh, I mean, I don't want to spoil anything. I went into this book pretty much completely blind, and, uh, and same with, uh, the other one, uh, The Nothing That Is. The Nothing That Is, I knew it was about a catering job of some sort, and this one I knew it was about kids, sort of a coming-of-age story, and, and so... And there were, you know, obviously there was a shack, because it's on the cover, and it's a beautiful cover. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so the story, uh, although it hit home, it didn't hit home. Like, it didn't mirror my childhood by any means, but, uh, but you still see yourself and your own childhood in it, and that shack. You know what? I think everyone in their childhood has found a shack, or something that's just there, and nobody knows why and you go explore it as children. It, uh, we had like burnt out houses and abandoned houses in my town that we always went to. And there's also this uh, weird little building at the back of a park that, uh, <laughs> that we, me and my friends kind of took over when I was a kid. And uh, so that was familiar too. Um, but this, this story kind of is about more uh, deeper than you know finding a shack it's about relationships and how uh, and how we relate to each other and uh, how how you treat somebody can result into something very negative now this story at the end goes into some very strange places that while you're reading you're gonna be you might think it make it's a complete mess but it's not read it again seriously because there is a thread there that that's following some logic it's just very strange i mean it's very strange and uh, it's hard to try to make sense of what's going on but there is sense there and i think really good weird fiction and cosmic horror does that and mike thorne does this like masterfully here this uh this book is just honestly it's 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 really quite awesome it's fucking brilliant <laughs> and I'm going to be singing its praises for a long time, so I hope that all you guys out there in booktube land are prepared for that. Um, I did have, as I mentioned, uh, one issue with it, and I, I felt it would have been hard not to start where Mike Thorne starts this story. You're pretty much thrust right into these kids' lives. There's like three of them, and uh, they're looking for a place to smoke uh, a cigarette. They don't want to get caught, so they want to be somewhere and they find this shack and they're like okay let's go smoke in there um it was just like being thrust into a story it was almost like uh, falling into a, a you know the malazan book of the fallen where you just don't know what's going on and it's hard to follow at first and i almost put it honestly i almost put it down <laughs> in fact i i had agreed to talk to mike thorne because he contacted me for the interview on that one and so i was reading this book before the collection that I was supposed to be reading for uh, the interview, and I was I was kind of worried. Uh, that first chapter really threw me. I was like, ah, I don't like this first chapter. I don't like it at all. Uh, and I was considering putting the book down. I was like, what does that mean for the collection? What if I don't like his short stories? But I went and read the second chapter, and man, did it improve after that. I, I don't know why I didn't like the first chapter, other than that it, it kind of derailed anything I just didn't know what was going on, and I was having trouble keeping track of the characters. Uh, and also, I didn't like the characters. I mean, they're not likable. <laughs> These kids, they're not likable. Um, and so, if you don't like, uh, if you don't like it when you don't like the characters, this book might not be for you. But uh, I found that the main character—I forget his name now—but uh, the main character, the character we're following, the one who becomes obsessed with the shack, he. Uh, He's very interesting, regardless if you like him or not. And honestly, that's all I need. If, if the character's interesting, then I'll follow them. So, does it live up to the cosmic horror? And we are wrapping up our final thoughts here. And absolutely, yes. It is like a classic, um, very classic type of 
cosmic horror story. Uh, more importantly, it has some very something very deep to say, especially about uh, humanity and, and, and the fucked up way we live today. Uh, while The Nothing had a lot to say about work environment, uh, Shelter has a, a lot to say about something even more personal. It's uh, our childhoods and the way we're raised. It's uh, people and their flaws and how we bring our flaws into our parenting. It's, uh, my, as I said, my biggest criticism was the first chapter, but beyond that, it is, uh, it's just, it's really good. It's full five stars for me, honestly. I gave, uh, I gave, uh, the nothing that is, uh, four stars. So there you go. Two awesome cosmic horror stories that I'm very happy I read this year. Um, so go check them out. Uh, stop watching me. Go get those books and read them. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching. Keep being creative and keep being safe. I'll catch you guys in the next bookish video.